My guest on Talking Business tonight believes an election as soon as possible is good for the economy. Jonathan Katsura says, if an election is done, it dashes in one political party with one vision for the country. tonight no need to introduce him but uh, just have to do it anyway <laughs> mr jonathan kazura great pleasure to have you on the program after a very long time thank you so much super it was, it was fine to bask in the sun <laughs> mr jonathan kazura is an economic commentator <coughs> he is also chairman of the rural industrial development private limited a company that makes it its business to invest in rural areas he's also a successful a chicken farmer. Great pleasure to have you on the program once again, Mr. Kadzura. Let's look at the state of the economy today. As a business person, as a farmer, as an, uh, somebody who, who, who checks the temperature of the, of the country, where are we? I think it is important to understand our present economic position from its correct perspective. Until year 2000, Zimbabwe was on a growth path. And we started recovering land, which of course has always been the objective of the indigenous Zimbabweans to recover their land. And that's when we started having a stagnation and negative growth in our economy. So when we look at the state of the economy, we must be able to put it in its right perspective. This country was sabotaged by Tony Blair by refusing to adhere to the terms of the Lancaster House Agreement. Have we not heard that too much? We have not heard that too much because we have refused to accept the truth. You are suggesting that, that you are suggesting that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, only challenges came in after the land reform program started. Or the, the lot of it that they. But, but we, came we had in. issues uh, around ISAP. There are issues around ISAP, mm -hmm. but they were towards the same thing. It became magnified when it started affecting the broader uh, Zimbabweans. ISAP had its own issues, such as take out free education, take out free medication, your budget expenditure is too much. And government, that time, Zanpil government, which was a people's government, which remains a people's government, was trying to meet its own mandate to save the people. But ESAP, of course, was used to sabotage that. But even more came the refusal to meet the Lancaster Agreement, Lancaster House Agreement, that the British should finance land. And when we started recovering land forcibly, which we did, we were put on under illegal sanctions. We did not have any access to international capital. And a lot of negative publicity started hitting our economy. But, but, one but, but Mr. Kazura, bef before you even proceed, one of the things that you've said here on this program before has been that, yes, the economic sanctions uh, that have been imposed on Zimbabwe by the EU, by the Americans, by many other Western countries, have had an impact on our economy, have had an, an impact on our economic growth. However, we've also imposed on ourselves some uh, internal sanctions where we could do things that we, uh, we don't need to worry about sanctions and we do the right things and, and we will be able to make progress. Th that is also true. Let us look at the inclusive government, which is only about two and a half, three years old. That's an internal sanction we have put against ourselves. That has disabled a government with a nationalistic approach to solving Zimbabwean problems, to fail to do it. It has been disempowered. You will recall that the majority of the people in the communal areas and the majority of the people who, in the, who are in the resettled areas had access to inputs. And it was necessary that they got those inputs as it remains necessary for them that they get those inputs because they cannot find money to buy the fertilizers and the seed. And therefore, it becomes a central government responsibility to ensure that that sector of our economy, which in fact harbors the most of our people, has access to the basic need of life, food. And let me tell you one thing. It's not just a question of them sustaining themselves. It's also a mechanism that is used, in fact, to control local inflation. Because when you can grow your food, when you can grow your raw materials, it means to say you're not competing for very few little food items that are available 
which have the potential of escalating the prices. So you actually control your inflation from agriculture and not from the shop, shop uh, okay. floors. So let's, let's look work. at where the, the economy is now. Mm -hmm. And we, we, if, we, if we look at where we were two years ago and where we are today, um, stability, you can certainly say, yes, we have stability. But the biggest challenge is obviously the, the, the lack of uh, liquidity, uh, no access to, to uh, international lines of credit. How can this problem be dealt with? I sincerely wonder whether our economy is stable. I've heard about stability. There is more political stability than there is economic stability. What stability do you talk about when all these young people are unemployed? What stability are you talking about when National Railways is dying? What stability do you talk about when all the planes that you have as a nation are landed? You're the chairman. What you must stability tell us. do you have when the University of Zimbabwe cannot open because there's no water? What stability do you have when no banks can lend? There is no economic stability. What is there as a stable nation is in fact what ZANU-PF has always talked about, unity, peace, and development. But the development aspect has now been, under uh, has now been overtaken by economic uh, harsh sanctions that are to some good extent internally imposed. Internally imposed by a part of this government, which for me has no understanding of national economies. Tendai BT is sitting on 438 million of SDRs unused that are not on that are not only collecting dust, but are com collecting unnecessary wasting unnecessary space. But but, but because uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. because these SDRs were supposed to be economic enablers. But is he acting alone? This is a government in it which he is part of. Surely, uh, one minister can hold the government to ransom if the decision of the government was to use those SDRs. Let me tell you one thing about the MDC government. MDC party. You see this, but you don't see that. It's like a paper from the IMF when they come in here with their template. They give you a paper. You read to each margin. But they don't read that. They read from where the margin ends to the other end because that is what is important to them. And this is where the Minister of Finance and his party comes in. They tell you this, but they are not them. They are being told that by those who are the invisible I, handlers. I, I hear you, and, and unfortunately, Tendai Biti is here. No one is here to defend the MDCT. Uh, 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 but the reality of the matter is that uh, Tendai Biti is a minister of finance in the Zimbabwe government. He uh, sits in the cabinet, chaired by the president. Surely the entire cabinet, if it is its conviction that we must use those SDRs, it will happen. If you're talking would, about would one minister hold the, the country to ransom? Yes, that has happened. How is it possible that uh, he would possible? do so? I think that question you might want to refer to the state president's own statement addressing the Consultative Council on Friday. When he was talking about inputs, he clearly said, and it's in the public media, he clearly said that I, it will not release money for inputs. Why is he, he being did not allowed say, to do he that? He did not say the government. Mm -hmm. He said Tendai <laughs> Biti will not release <laughs> money because he's an agent. The MDC is a foreign agent. It's a change agent for foreign powers. In the same way we have seen a lot of changes taking place in some of these African states. And we know that it's the strength of the Zimbabwean people that has actually sustained this nation to where it is. Would have long gone by the wayside. And it's all a fight to strengthen economies of the West, and not ours. This morning you'd have heard, the American unemployment rate has shot up to 7.2%. On this program before, I predicted that it would go up to 10%. I predicted that the British economy unemployment rate would go up to 10%. It's already hitting that. And you also know that the banks in the West, their own grading has now come down. It's, a, it's because of the levels of a failure or a lack to produce enough that at, at the local economy level that gives people an opportunity to work. And when you have that, you have social unrest. Britain had it. Spain is having it now. Italy is having it now. Greece is a daily meal. It's because of that. These things are used in order to create confusion in the third world countries, particularly us now, because they see the dangers at their doorsteps. Africa as a whole is one country that still has untouched raw materials. Beautiful soils for agriculture. There's a food shortage. You've seen the hiking of uh, uh, food, food inflation prices. in the world. Mm -hmm. And Africa is harboring this potential. So how do we access it? We create political confusion. Let them fight. 
and let's find a way into the economy. Okay, we're going to touch on that and much more when we come back from the break. You're watching Talking Business. My name is Superman Diwanzira. My guest tonight is Jonathan Kadzura. He's an economic commentator and uh, he's a rural businessman. Rather, he likes to invest in rural areas. Thank you for joining us on Talking Business. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. This is Talking Business. My name is Superman Diwanzira. My guest tonight is Jonathan Kadzura, economic commentator. You were telling us before we went for the break that you're concerned that we are sitting on hundreds of millions of US dollars in SDRs, and that could be used for this economy. If you were the Minister of Finance, what would you do today? With, not with not those that resources? I would wish to be, okay. but as a, a simple, commonsensical Zimbabwean, I would apply those resources to our public infrastructure. Public infrastructures are the easiest, quickest, biggest methodologies used the world over to create employment. I would put a lot of money into national railways, into our roads, into our telecoms. University of Zimbabwe, was it not a joke of the year, if not of the, of the century, that kids were assembled to go into dormitories, but were sent back home because there was no water. But someone is sitting on 400 million US dollars meant for that purpose. How do you explain that to a deaf person? When that child gets back home, how, what explanation does, does, do they give to their parents? So it's not as if our suffering is for, the, is for the most only being created from outside by what we see. But it's also being created from outside using internal elements to derail the will of the people. If, for example, like we used to do in the 80s, dams were going up, new roads were coming up, schools were coming up, hospitals were coming up, everybody had a job. But this time, who has a job? Everybody has no job. And the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Industry, our minister, the Minister of Economic Development are ministries that, in fact, are designed to create a balanced economic development in the country. Now we hear there's a special committee for Bulaway. What nonsense is that? A special government for Bulaway? A special committee perhaps for Mutare? What nonsense is that? A ministerial one. To do what? It is Zimbabwe. There's a ministerial, an inter-ministerial committee to look at as Zimbabwe. For how long? What decision have they made? So we are degenerating, well, but, but, uh, excuse you me, you bring we, are degenerate, we are degenerate, it's an infrastructural element. Mm, element. It's a subsystem of the infrastructure. It's an economic enabler, which has been killed, which is being killed, you willingly. Have, which you have killed as a chairman. Which I have been made to be an agent of it by those with the resources. We cannot do anything. I'm not an executive chairman. I have no access to government facilities. I override, I oversee policy. Why do you need now facilities when, you when go, you've got excuse the air, me? when you have aircraft, you have a business, why do you need facilities? Go and borrow from banks. You don't, you don't just go and borrow from banks when you're in a hole. The banks will say no to you. We suggested a long time ago that the shareholder shifts the Air Zimbabwe debt to its books and leave Air Zimbabwe a clean element. That can probably attract a, 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 a partners. But that has not happened. Nobody's interested. So we're interested in killing that system. And it's not the only one. Are, now you, telling, everybody are you telling us there's a deliberate effort to, to destroy uh, uh, Air Zimbabwe? Are you telling me that as a citizen of this country you don't see it? I want it to come from the chairman. I want you to, as a person, as a user, do you not see it? You have better authority to tell me than yes, I Yes, there have. is. By who? B by the Minister of Finance, in my view. What should they be It's doing? not only deliberate, it's treacherous. I personally went to meet the Minister of Finance. And when I walked through his doors, he said, no, as Zimbabwe, let it die. What does that tell you? It was a personal, a personal request that I see him and discuss it. And in the end, he says, can you give me what you think would be a viable plan? I gave it to him six weeks ago. I've not had one word back. Is it not because Zimbabwe has been a drain to the fiscal, has been drained taxpayers' money, and we haven't seen the results? Have we cut down Zesa because it, uh, in the past six months they've made a $100 million uh, loss? 
Have we cut down Zeno? Have we cut down National Rose of Zimbabwe? Let us so why would it be about Air Zimbabwe? Why would Air it's Zimbabwe be singled it, out? It has been singled out because there's probably interest to buy it when it's a shell. Which, is the, which in fact it has become. Or sell it, which becomes easy. And we take our profits from outside the, the, the sale, outside the country. Why should we have such a keen interest in destroying assets of a national feature? A national airline, like national railways, like ZESA, like ZINWA, those are economic enablers. They are not necessarily supposed to make a profit. At best, they break even. At best, they break even. But their profits are sitting on hotels' balances. They are sitting in tourism balances. They are sitting in boardrooms because they bring in the decision makers to make a decision to invest or not invest in your country. Zino zano PFG zino ba mazwa yase zino ba muruku di kura kiza wakut pani wari kuda kuba. Atisku, there is no point you kura kiza zuri kuoneka. I'm pleased it was the private papers that brought it up. The larger gate. What is it all about? I I I, I saw one minister trying to choose what one, one car to jump into. There was a Jeep, a Mercedes 350. There was a there was a, a uh, uh, Prado and his wife were so confused as to which car they were going to use uh, <laughs> from Parliament. <laughs> uh, until an aide said, Get into this one. And it's an MDC minister. Uh, I mean, this is it. And then you look back and think, Good God, where is this going? Such an inclination of high consumption at the expense of production, at the expense of these young people who are degreed who walk the streets, who sleep on the streets, and we have the comfort of this luxury around ourselves, and then we call ourselves leaders. What leaders? There was resistance to pay the civil servants. You recall that? Until the state president personally had to stamp his authority that they be paid. But Mercedes-Benz were, were being bought. Prados were being bought. Jeeps are being bought. Which latest and version of the money of the was car, being released by which ministry? By the same ministry of the Treasury. Desks are being bought for offices, luxury chairs, computers. They're all being bought. So you begin to observe. I mean, you tell me, you tell me the logic of it all. Let us look at our city of Harare. The suburban areas and city center now have new tired roads. The suburban roads in the city of Harare now have new tired roads. Go to Mbare. Mwanaru kufamba sina butsu. Siwe jaga paduka. Nobody is taking, taking care of that. Enda kuma vuku. Enda kutafara. But the suburban areas, kunema moti kariwo wawo. Anema taya rithik like that. Plus butsu yake. It's third. Where the voter is, the same voter wa MDC. Mwanaru kufamba dodi. Ana boots. Ku clinic kuna mshonga. What 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 mendacity? What what thinking is that? Dr. Jonathan Kadzu, the doctor of common sense. We have to take a break. We're coming back in a moment. You watching talking to